Welcome to section 5.6, Double and Half Argument Properties. In this section, we're going to answer these questions. What are the equivalent expressions for the products and squares of cosine and sine? What are the double argument properties for sine, cosine, and tangent? What are the half argument properties for sine, cosine, and tangent? And finally, which properties have multiple representations? Let's start with the products and sums of cosine and sine. So by products and sums of cosine and, so and sine, what I mean is that I want to know if there's another way to write sine x times cosine x. Is there a property to re-express that in other terms? And the square of each of those, cosine squared x and y equals sine squared x. Well, first let's explore their graphs and see what they look like. Here I've input the three graphs, sine x times cosine x, cosine x times cosine x, and sine x times sine x. So let's start with sine x times cosine x and see what the graph looks like. We see a sinusoid. And if we were to determine this, this sinusoid's equation, here I've made a copy of that sinusoid, sine x times cosine x, and I can see that it follows the behavior of a sine function, starts at the origin, but it has a period of pi instead of 2 pi. and an amplitude of one-half. So, putting it into our general sinusoidal equation, we would say that the equation for the sinusoid is equivalent to an amplitude of one-half times the sine of 2 pi over pi, would be my b value. So, one-half sine 2 x. Now let's look at the graph of cosine squared x. So we'll bring back win plot, and here's, we'll hide this graph, and select cosine times cosine, see what that graph looks like. This also appears to be a sinusoid. So let's go back and examine this graph of cosine squared x. Here, our behavior follows the cosine function, starting at a maximum on the y-axis. And here again, we have a period of pi. Now, here, our sinusoidal axis isn't the x-axis, but halfway between 0 and 1. So our sinusoidal axis is at one half, and an amplitude of one half. So here we could say that cosine squared could also be written as one half plus one half cosine. 2x. Since our period is half of what it was originally, we have a sinusoidal axis of one half and an amplitude of one half. Finally, let's look at the sine squared of x graph. So let's hide the cosine squared and bring out sine squared. This also looks like a sinusoid. So, let's pull out the sine squared graph. Here, again, our sinusoidal axis is going to split the maximums and minimums at one-half, giving us also an amplitude 
of one half. So sinusoidal axis of one half. Amplitude of one half. Now the function we're going to use, notice how instead of starting at a maximum or at the midpoint, like a cosine or a sine would, would start, this graph starts at a minimum. If we take our cosine graph, cosine of x, and we multiply by negative 1, that would flip our cosine graph across the sinusoidal axis. And instead of starting at a maximum, we would start at a minimum. So the function that this appears to be modeling is a negative cosine. And since our period is pi again, our b value will be 2, 2 pi over pi. To write this particular image with a general sinusoidal equation, we would say y equals our sinusoidal axis of 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x, because we flipped the behavior of the, the cosine. It has an amplitude of 1 half and a period of pi. And our b value is 2 pi over pi. So let's summarize what each of those products of cosine and or sine uh, can be represented as. First of all, the cosine times cosine can be rewritten as one half of the sine of 2x, as we've seen. And the cosine squared can be written as one half plus one half cosine 2x. And finally, our sine squared of x can be written as one half minus one half cosine 2x.